Hey guys, I've seen this effect in many websites and I thought like, why don't we just go ahead and create this effect so you know how to create it. I'm first gonna create it in Protopy and then I'm gonna create it in HTML and CSS using JavaScript or Alpine, just so you can see how to actually achieve it. So that the effect today that we'll be creating is, so we have this intro section that is done in Figma. I imported it and I'm just gonna do all of that right in front of you. But now if you actually move your mouse, you see this illustration moving back and forth or based on the mouse position. So as you can see, this person is moving independently of the background, the background is moving separately, and you can decide how much granularity you need in it. But as soon as I basically teach you how to do one thing, you should be able to figure out how to do the other thing yourself. So let's just get started and create this. I'm just gonna close it. I'm gonna delete this whole thing. I'm gonna delete all my effects on the right. I'm gonna delete the variables since we're gonna need the variables. And I can also go ahead and just revert this back to the original, I don't know what it was, like the original device frame. So once you're in Figma, I'm just gonna open my Figma. Here we have our design. You have to, first of all, actually separate out the things that you wanna move differently. So I have this person, as you can see, I'm just gonna create a frame around him. And then I have this background. I actually took this illustration from the Sapiens Institute. Oh, sorry, not the Sapiens Institute, but the Sapiens uh, website or the Sapiens illustration. So you can have a look at that. But basically you need to separate out the elements that you wanna move around. So I wanna move this person, I wanna move this background separately. And that's what we need. So the first thing that we need to do before importing is we need to go ahead and see what the frame size of this whole intersection is gonna be. It's 1440 by 880. So we're gonna go into Protopy. I'm gonna go at the top in the device selection. I'm gonna go to my custom sizes and I'm gonna say that the size here is gonna be 1440 by 880 and the density can be one. I'm gonna press OK. So here we have the size that we need. I'm gonna go and open the Protopy uh, plugin using the command P shortcut on Mac and I'm gonna select the screen that I wanna export and just click on the export button here. So while this is happening, I just wanna point out that one of my subscribers wrote a really, or maybe he's a subscriber, just a viewer wrote a really long message about how I'm speaking very fast and sometimes when I'm pointing to things, I'm not necessarily mentioning what those things are and it gets a bit hard to follow. So what I'm gonna to try to do at least in my videos is slow down even more and try to remember that whenever I'm pointing out something or doing something, I should name it so you can recognize what I'm sort of doing. <clears throat> Especially when you're looking at it on mobile or anything along those lines. So now here we have our illustration. I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom in on it because I see a problem with it. Let's just zoom out a bit. And I see that there is, well, never mind. This isn't a problem, this, this was actually in the design as well. So Protopy does a really great job at importing designs directly from Figma. So that's great. Now that you're here, you actually need to go ahead and create a variable. If you go ahead and create a variable for all of the screens, that's not gonna work. And the reason for that is we wanna detect the X position on this screen, right? So we can't really create a variable that's gonna be globally accessible through to all of the other screens. We wanna create a variable only for this screen. So you're gonna go into the variables panel on the bottom right and you're gonna click the plus icon and say, I wanna create a variable only for this screen. I'm gonna name the variable X mouse or whatever, just X mouse is fine. Here you can see we have the formula field. I'm gonna go here. I can go ahead and press the uh, dollar sign or I can just go here, press the dollar sign and use the mouse X key. If you remember it, you can obviously use it without opening this, but if you don't, you can just go here. I'm gonna similarly create another variable for this screen and I'm gonna go ahead and name it X Y mouse. So this is gonna be our Y mouse position. I'm gonna choose the formula and I'm gonna say Y mouse. And as you can see, if I go here, this actually is not represented because the, mou the Y position is mouse Y, not Y mouse. <laughs> so just something to remember. So now that we have these two things, what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna add a trigger. And in this trigger, I'm gonna say, I wanna detect something, like something from happening. And as you can see, we have a lot of pointers here. Do you wanna detect, detect something on the, on the actual things that you already have in frames or in the layers? Or do you wanna detect something that's happening on your variables? I wanna say, I wanna detect something that's happening on my X mouse variable that basically detects the position of my mouse. 
and I'm going to say I want to do something. And it obviously is obvious that I want to detect the X position and do something with my person frame that I created. So since I named this person, it's really easy to find. Otherwise, you can see that in this layers panel, if you actually keep on scrolling, it's really hard to actually find things if you don't have them named. Fortunately, I actually have it above so I can just select it. So now, now that I have that done, I'm going to say I want to move this person and I want to move this person to, I want to move him to a particular position and I want to choose a X value for it. So since we are moving the mouse in the X position, I want to choose an X value for this particular element. So what we want to do is I just want to go ahead and show what happens if I just go ahead and say I want to use the uh, X mouse or the mouse exposition. So basically just use the mouse exposition. What happens if I just do that and preview this to you, as you can see, it just goes out of the screen. And the reason for that is anytime I move this, it just moves to the exposition of the mouse. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to disable the easing here so we can see everything happening in real time. So if I go here and if I just place my mouse here, as you can see, this is moving based on my mouse position though obviously this person's position is going to be with respect to the container that's sitting around it so in order to just go ahead and move it exactly where we want we can go ahead and remove it from the container so now its x position is going to be more focused on the edge of the mouse that we have but this is this isn't really what we want right we don't want this to happen so what exactly do we want well what we want is first of all I'm just going to go ahead and move my person directly into uh, the frame that it was in. I can go ahead and I can create another container around it. So this is going to be our person container. And I'm just going to pause for a bit because we have Azan going on here. And I'm going to resume the video after the Azan has finished. Okay so just resuming back now that I've created this person container if we just go ahead and preview this thing as you can see something really weird happens and this happens because as soon as I move my mouse I'm just going to go here this is the edge and similarly the person's <clears throat> the person elements edge is the person container that we created around him so obviously if we take it on the right it's going to completely uh, just be like again too much for the animation that we're actually uh, and that we actually want so what we can do is at the very least we can try and we can say that I want to move this person divided this person's position based on the mouse X position but divided by let's say 50 if we just do that and if we preview this as you can see this is already looking so much better if we want to move it fast we can obviously reduce the division and we can say 25 and let's just go ahead and preview this and this looks something like this Ideally, it looks really nice if the animation isn't really that strong. So I'm just going to keep it at 35 and let's just see how that looks. I think this probably looks, this is something that I'm comfortable with. So let's just keep it at that. Similarly, what I want to do is I want to move the background that's there. So this is the background. It's sitting in the Sapiens container. I'm just going to go ahead to simplify things. I'm going to create a container around it and I'm going to say this is going to be our background container. Now I'm going to say that what should move? Actually, the background should move. The background should move and let's just see. Yeah, the background should move to the mouse X position as mentioned, but divided by 35. However, we want the background to move in the opposite direction instead of the same direction as the person. So I'm just going to enter a minus here. Now that I have that done, as you can see, if I am moving my mouse on the right, the background is moving on the left. If I move the, my mouse on the left, the background is moving on the right. So it's moving in the opposite direction. One thing that we have to remove is we have to remove this easing effect because that's causing some trouble. So now, as you can see, if I move it on the left, the person is moving on. The person is moving in the same direction as my mouse, but the background is moving in the opposite direction, which gives it a really nice feel. So now that we have this done, I'm just going to duplicate this detect thing that we did at the top for by pressing the command D key and I'm going to use my Y position here. Similarly, I'm going to go here and I'm going to say that we want to use our mouse Y position for this. And we're going to do the same thing for this particular thing. And we're going to say we want to move our mouse Y position for this. 
Now that we have this done, as you can see, if I move it up and down, nothing really happens. And the reason for that might be is, let's just go ahead and, why, and see why that is happening. So what we're saying is that this, uh, okay, so I found the reason. It's because we're moving it in the x, uh, diam x coordinate. We don't want to move it in the x position. We want to move it on the y one. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut both, this, both these things and place them here. So now that we have this done, as you can see, we have the up and down movement, we have the left and right movement. But one thing that I don't like with the up and down movement is that it's too much. Like we definitely don't want it that much. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm instead of minus 35 or 35% or dividing it by 35, I'm gonna divide it by a substantially higher number, maybe twice it, so divided by 70. Similarly, I'm gonna go here and divide this by 70 as well. So now it looks much more sleeker, much more smooth. And this is exactly what we wanted. Now, if you want to add any other animations, if you wanna, let's say, add any animations on this particular item or anything along those lines, you can do that on your own just by framing these elements separately and adding the detect. The detect elements are already there. You can just select what you wanna move. So you can just go ahead and do that. So that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. Let me know if you enjoyed this video, if you wanna, see more videos on animations like these and interactive stuff in protobine like this and i can definitely go ahead and push out more content on that the next video that we're going to do is actually going to go ahead and implement not only this animation but this whole page along with this animation in html css and javascript so stay tuned for that and i'll see you in the next video and definitely definitely don't forget to subscribe i'll see you later take care bye